guys, and welcome back to WTFN, which is the episode where Scott and I go through all the weird stories that we didn't have a chance yeah. to talk about throughout the week. So, now, first of all, this isn't really a weird story per se, no. but it's an update to the big C -E CAS episode that we did, which was the new Six Strikes and You're Out anti-piracy policy. Yep. Um, and now people are starting to actually receive these notifications because it kind of went into effect this right. week. And the interesting thing is that the, the what, what provider do you use? I use Comcast. Me too, yeah. yeah. Okay. So each of the companies that are doing this um, have been allowed to sort of de design their own notifications and their own specific punitive mm -hmm. action. Um, so we now know which company is doing what. And so Comcast, which pertains to you and I, right. um, they, on the fifth notice, will hijack your browsers with a pop-up notice that won't go away unless you call a customer uh, security representative and resolve the issue with them. Whatever that means, it's probably you, ha you have to sit through a lecture or yeah, something. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Verizon is the only major ISP that will actually cap your data speed, though. At the in the latter alerts, they'll force you to watch instructional videos about copyright, and if you keep doing it, um, they will basically set you back to dial-up speeds for a couple days. Yeah, that was the first Which, one we actually knew about. Yeah, we did a story about. I did a story on it a couple couple weeks ago. Yeah, and I actually think that's the most annoying out of all yeah, of them, in yeah. my opinion. Um, and Time Warner, similar similarly to Comcast, at the fifth and sixth alerts, they will give you a browser lock that mm -hmm. will go away unless you have a educational conversation with a security rep. Um, <laughs> Cablevision will completely suspend your service for 24 hours at the 5th and 6th alerts if you don't challenge it. As for last one, bear with me, AT&T will demand they take take an extra step to review materials on an online portal, so yet another you know educational yeah. thing. So it's very education focused, um, and it's not really clear what happens after the 6th warning. The companies say uh, they will not turn over your information to copyright holders, but yeah. 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 Now, obviously, people aren't happy about this. One of the one of the reasons being there's room for error. So I wanted to bring up this email I got from Sean Nabel this week, who had a similar experience four years ago with a company called Insight. They claimed I had been downloading copyright movies and rap music. At the time, we only had one home PC, and neither my wife nor I had downloaded any illegal content. So I vehemently pro protested. And after weeks of fighting with them, they eventually admitted that the downloads occurred something like two weeks before we became customers on that line. He goes on to say, it's a process that involves humans and mistakes happen. It's my hope that they are taking care to limit those mistakes as much as possible. Yeah. So the ultimate point being that it's it's a human process. Right. There's going to be mistakes and it will be interesting to see those roll in. It really will be. And speaking of human <laughs> process and mistakes, a, uh, a mother is letting the internet name her baby for $5,000. Yeah, a woman. Worth it. Yeah, worth totally it. worth it. A woman in West LA <laughs> named Natasha Hill. She's 26. Uh, she has decided to let the internet decide the name of her child on uh, on Belly Ballot. So she had previously considered names like Winter and uh, what, uh, what is it? Katora. Katora or Katora. I, I like Katora. <laughs> I like Katara. Both are not good. Both are terrible <laughs> names. Both are awful names. So she turned to the internet for even even uh, worse ideas. Uh, I highly suggest all of our viewers go in there and type in Jokatron 5000 and vote that one up. Cause or what about Annie? That's Annie a if it's a name. boy. I think Annie if it's okay, a boy. Okay, we can agree yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, something else we can also agree on is uh, in Japan, you can now make gummy bear versions of yourself. Yeah, they do a, a 3D scan of your body. Uh, there's a company, it's in celebration of White Day, which in Japan is a holiday where men are expected to re reciprocate the gifts that were given to them for V-Day. It's $65. Not a bad deal. Not a bad at deal. All. Not a bad deal. Except they don't tell you how big the gummy bear is going to be. Yeah, so we don't know if these, this is like a life size gummy bear. Yeah, if it's bear, one of those giant gummy or bears if it's, or if it's, it's just a regular, regular gummy size gummy bear. But it's a bargain for the fat guys because they have a lot of they have a lot of extra tummy. True. So you get true. a little more gummy for your buck. All right. Um, now here's a little uh, fashion story for you. I know you guys hey. love fashion. Yeah. Um, there's a new line of thermochromic <laughs> jeans that changes colors with heat from a company called Naked and Famous Denim, which also makes glow in the dark jeans. I've and, actually seen those. And wait for it. Scratch and sniff denim. Seen those as well. They smell like poop. Smelled those too. So you can imagine the fashion mistakes that could happen with this. Yeah. Uh, it would just, it, everyone would just have white areas where it was just heating up on their crotch. Remember I, hyper I want color? one. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Want, I want a pair of these. I kind of do too. I miss hyper color. You know, you get the hyper color shirt, put your hand on it, twist it up, blow on it, make a, make a, uh, a tie dye shirt. They were great. 
Bring it back. Bring the 90s back. Now, next up, we have a different kind of garb, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, that's right. more utilitarian, but this is a great thing. Um, there's a robot suit designed to aid the physically challenged and elderly, which received a global safety certificate. It's called Hybrid Assistive Limb, or HAL, and it's basically a power-assisted pair of uh, legs from a Japanese robot maker called Cyberdyne. Cyberdyne. What it does <laughs> is it, it, it uh, detects your muscle impulses to anticipate your movements mm -hmm. um, and support those movements. So, so this is obviously an awesome thing for anyone who's uh, physically disabled in any way, um, right. and it, it'll be really cool to see where this goes. Also a terrifying thing for anyone who's ever seen Terminator, because Cyberdyne. Right. We know how that ended up. Not good. Not, not good. good. Speaking of not good, uh, there is the, this, this story is kind of insane. All right. So there's this store in New York called We Buy White Albums, where the only thing in the store are Beatles White Albums. and. The, all they do is buy white albums. They don't sell them. It's a store full of Beatles white albums. There's this guy in New York. He's trying to collect all original three million copies of the white album and listen to them, and he just loves them. You can't really call it a store if you're no. not selling anything. No. And by the way, guy, if you're watching this, is, you are, you are, I hate you. Yeah. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I look forward to It's not to a your store. Yeah. Don't call it a store. Call it a museum <laughs> if that's what you want to do with your life. Yeah. And by the way, Oh, were you just giving him a disapproving look yeah. into the camera? Okay. <laughs> Done now. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay, so thank goodness. Uh, there is an Oakland couple that has been found safe in Peru. Their names are Garrett Hand and Jane, Jamie Neal, both 25 years old. They, want on a, they went on a bike tour of South America and then on a whim took another tour of a more remote um, locations around the Napo River. Um, the thing is, there's little internet access around right. there, so they failed to post updates on Facebook and whatnot, and as a result, their families ordered huge search parties for them all over South America, and they realized what had happened and went, oh crap, and they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. Um, they, their relatives had last heard from them uh, on January 25th, apparently, and we don't know exactly what they told their relatives, but it's kind of an interesting story because it shows you uh, what can happen if you don't post on Facebook right. these days, I guess. Um, people think you're dead. Yeah. So, so good. So this is also, glad you're okay. Yeah, this is also why I'm glad my parents aren't on Facebook because <laughs> they're not going to send out a search party for me because they don't care about me. Single tear. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's okay. That's the last story for today. Right? I, it is. That, 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 yes. that, uh, that, there's a second single tear coming down because that's the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> if you want more Tech Feed, Subscribe to the channel. We'll be back in about two hours with another story. Till next time, I'm Scott. I'm Annie. Should we talk about my jeans? Uh, we, we should talk <laughs> about your jeans. What happened? Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, I am bruised and battered right now. I fell off my scooter today. Ooh, uh, are you okay? I'm fine. Um, I, I think my jeans are ruined, so I feel like this is a really good opportunity for me to buy a pair of thermo... Thermochromatic? Right? Yeah. I should get a pair, right? You should get some hypercolor jeans. I, I should. Okay, or, done. Or some tech jeggings. Oh, both. <laughs>